Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Ladies and gentlemen, start your emulators. It's time for another episode of Retro OS, giving you guys your recommended dose of nostalgia for reviewing games from your childhood. This episode is a day one review special. This time we take a look at the remaster of debatably one of the best RTS games ever made. Will this game restore our faith in the remasters? Or will this game suffer the same cruel fate as the Grand Theft Auto Definitive Edition Trilogy? Without further ado, let's find out. The late 90s, early 2000s was the time where strategy games in general was at its peak. This was time when all-time classics like StarCraft, developed by Blizzard Entertainment, and the original Age of Empires, developed by Texas Pace Ensemble Studios, both was released in 1997. Both these classics are still being played competitively, specifically Vietnam and South Korea. StarCraft is so popular in South Korea, at one point, Professional Star Warcraft Red Wars players were sent to the South Korean football team's dressing rooms in order for them to play better. As I have said in a previous blog update, the original Age of Empires was the first RTS experience that I had on a PC platform. The second entry of the Age of Empires series, dubbed Age of Kings, was released in 1999. The final stop on this tour is, of course, this title released to the public in 2002. This game had a whole new three game engine to boot, the Bang Engine. This title strays a little from your typical Age of Empires game. Instead of basing the game on its story from actual historical events, this game is based on mythology, for example the Odyssey and the Iliad or the War on Troy. This game's story revolves around the fictional maritime city of Atlantis. You play as Arcantos, an admiral of the Atlantean army. It is up to you to fight your way through the war on Troy, the shifting sands of Egypt, and the frozen wastes of Midgard to put a stop on a deadly plot to destroy the ancient world using the Titans. The access ability scores are as follows. To kick things off, visibility scored a sky high 11. In terms of this category, the developer seems to have gone the extra mile. Instead of using preset column line modes, you can customize your own color skin completely. On top of that, you can enable a feature called friend or full colors. Now this feature is exactly the same as Alliance colors in Total War games. The player's color reflects that player's diplomacy towards you. Therefore, on the top of that, you could customize this to suit your impairments. So this game is easily playable for players with facial impairments. To slightly lose some form of momentum, Audibility gave it 10.5. Once again, World's Edge feels it as a point in terms of this category. Cutscenes during the campaign and dialogue during missions are fully subtitled. Better still, you can customize the font size of these subtitles. This reduces the risk of visually impaired players getting any eye strain while reading the subtitles. However, text-based warnings in the same vein as the previous entries of the series could make this game a little more accessible, as these important notifications are only indicated by audio cues which can cause a very serious issue for a player with hearing impairments. Particularly in an RTS game where reaction times are essential. So despite the shortfalls, this game is highly accessible for a player with hearing impairments. To regain this form of momentum, Mobility Squad at Sky High 11. As you can see in the footage you see here, the PC version has full controller support right out of the box. I understand that the keyboard and mouse support are embedded into the strategy game's DNA, but full controller support gives the players an option to play the game should they see playing with a controller be more comfortable. Now guys, time for an open question. Should full controller support be the standard for the video game industry as a whole, or should this ancient feature be phased out? 
So as always, let me know down in those comments. For players who prefer the traditional keyboard and mouse interface, hotkeys can be fully customized to suit your impairments. So this game is very easily playable for a player with a mobility impairment. To finish off on this extremely high note, gameplay score at Sky High 11. This, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do a remaster of an all-time classic. Instead of tweaking the existing game engine, which allows the game to be played on modern hardware, the developers decided to use Age of Empires 3 Definitive Editions engine to power the game. The developers have done a phenomenal job of keeping the source material intact. This title has currently has the base game and the first game's expansion, The Titans. Currently there are five civilizations to command, the Greeks, the Egyptians, the Norse and the Atlanteans, with each one having their own unique playstyle, mechanics and of course, god powers. Now these god powers can be used at any time during a battle. These range from locking animals to a specific location, a restoration fields which heals units and repairs buildings, earthquakes and meteor storms which damages a certain area of the map. With three distinct single player campaigns to play through, you'll be playing this game on months on months on end. When you finally clear them, there are skirmish mode and online multiplayer to test your skill against other players. In summary, Age of Mythology Retold is, a, is another great example of a remake of a classic RTS game done right. <clears throat> the developers have taken what's good about the game and cranked them tenfold. For example, God players are the mechanics that make this game truly unique. In the classic version, every time you advance an age, you have to select a mana god with their own unique god powers and upgrades. However, these god powers can be used only once per match. In this particular edition of the game, this mechanic has undergone a much needed rework. God powers can be reused after a, quite a long recharge time. In each and every use of a particular god power requires a certain amount of favor to use. Now this cost increases each and, each and every time you use this. In my honest opinion, this is an ingenious way of adding emphasis on this particular mechanic while keeping things nice and balanced. In the classic versions, the Atlanteans can use their god powers twice, in some cases three times. With the inclusion of crossplay between Xbox and PC users, with full keyboard and mouse support with the Xbox versions, there is no input advantage when playing between the formats, as your APM APM or actions per minute definition one, a term that measures the number of orders to units that an RTS player can issue in the short span of the minute. This is extremely important in the genre, as when you're building up your economy and training your army, your opponent might be sending units to wipe you out at the exact same time takes a very significant hit when using a controller. So if you're an RTS enthusiast and is looking for an old school RTS to play on the run up and during the Christmas period, I seriously cannot recommend this game enough to you. This game is a part of your Xbox Game Pass subscription. Don't knock it till you try it. And the overall score is 108.75%. This is Parts of Commander 1992 Federer of the Civil Game Review signing off, and I'll see you guys in the next review.